go. And we're rolling. What? The one. The one. What's up, guys? I'm here with Phil X. Do people call you Phil or Phil X in these videos specifically? Yeah, you know, we're buddies now. You can call me Phil. I mean, you don't call everybody their last name, right? Okay. It was so funny because I, I when I met my niece when she was seven, she goes, Uncle Phil X. <laughs> you don't have so to say, say Uncle X. Uncle Tyler Larson. Hey, <laughs> how you doing, man? Well, um, thanks for hanging out with me, man. We've had some cool chats off camera while we we're getting everything set up. And so. now we're on camera, so that's fucking crazy. I know, man. Now we're uh, now we have to be on because we're yeah. Now we're on. Okay. Oh, like Stand up straight. I mean, sit up straight. This is the G major scale. No. <laughs> it's not turning into that. Want to do a harmony? <laughs> <laughs> we'll save that. Um, actually, you know what? Why don't we start with a little riffing, just so we it's, can have some. It's warm up, yeah. Cut some, cut some stuff over. Mm -hmm. I liked that. The funky thing? I don't know. <laughs> Feeling in groove and you're doing stuff and then it's tricks and then it's just yeah man fucking around. So I think the hardest thing to do is play rhythm guitar while you're watching somebody take licks like that. I know because then you're, you're, you hear something that's really cool and then it throws you off and you I gotta get my whole body into the rhythm otherwise I lose it. Yeah man. So thanks for uh, thanks for giving me a little self esteem because that was really hard for me. I feel like it, Good at job, least man. Good I'm just, job. I have to compliment myself because. Otherwise, I'll just keep complimenting you. But I, I, I want to... Uh, just, the, just say, Tyler, you're awesome. This that's, is how, all, that's how I do it. That's actually a good kind of segue into a question that I get all the time from my subscribers and students and stuff. How do you like make yourself feel good when you're in a rut? How do you bust a rut on guitar, whether that means you hit a plateau or you like don't feel like picking up the guitar yeah. for whatever reason. Has that ever happened? What I mean, you I, do? it happens to everybody. Okay. I, I think it does. And um, there's, there's things that I do like, uh, and this is stuff that I don't even have to play. There's stuff that I'll play and there's stuff that I'll just talk about. Like I'll, uh, if I'm feeling a rut, I'll, I'll take licks that I already know that I've already uh, conquered. Yeah. And just not use my first finger. Oh, okay. And, and just use these three. And that's really hard. <laughs> All right. But it's like think of think of think of the simplest licks. Like you're, you're, you know, it's really hard, but it's it's actually a challenge you yourself to, and you start using your pinky more. Okay. And then and then the next time you you you, you did that for a whole day, the next day you'd bring your index finger back, and now you're using your pinky more. It's kind of interesting. And your pinky has a little bit more dexterity and strength. Exactly, because you you know you spent the day before. Um, 
And then you have to, you don't have four fingers, so you have to actually slide one finger over to compensate for not having four fingers. Right. So you, you play differently. And anytime you play differently, you come up with different licks. Yep. So then when you incorporate your index again, then you've, you're coming, you're, you're broadening your, your vocabulary already. Is there any specific lick example that you might cite as a product of that mindset? Nope. <laughs> <laughs> yes, but I, I, I mean, it's not going to come to mind right now because okay. at some point you, you don't... Well, maybe that one that you just played. That, that, I right. mean, that's the basic lick, like you said, but I've seen you perform on stage for the past few nights, and I can see, you know, the way you just, I don't know, man, like, you took your, your, your kind of wrist the way it was bending. Yeah. And, you know, when you, you showed me that chromatic thing. Yeah, the chromatic cool. thing. There's two chromatic things. And this, this is like when you, uh, see, it went, one time I did hit a plateau, and this is a really long time ago, and I was jamming. I, and it was funny, I was warming up for a show, and, and there was a banjo player that was playing in the band and that was doing the matinee. Yeah. And he came over and started doing some banjo licks, and I, I really loved how they used the open string. And I thought, that's really cool, I could come up with something like... Because I love dissonance and I love a rub, depending, with distortion. It sounds really a lot cooler, yeah. and not like two cats in a bag fighting. <laughs> so, but then I thought, okay, so I got that open string. That's not an open string, but this one is. And then, and then the first finger just basically becomes the open string wherever you go down the neck. So it's. Yeah. That kind of thing. So, and that just covers the whole neck. And I love stuff that covers the whole neck. It just it shows people that you don't have to be stuck in a box. Totally, breaking out of the box is important. Well, I think the bo the box is it has. It's boxes when you think about it. Sure. Like think about it as a plural. Like this is a box. This is a box. This is a box. And this is a box. And so forth. So they, they appear in other places if we're in the key of V. So that's what this one. And then so but what happens when you like I do this thing, this solo in um in the, in the in the Bon Jovi uh, concert where it's the second it's the first song this house is not for sale and then we do a coda and I ended up doing this really cool leg that was like uh, and a friend came up to me what the fuck is that and I go it's the pentatonic boxes on two strings yeah so it's I'm playing the exact same thing just spreading it out for sure and then that leads to same boxes in a different order with a slide in between I got you. And then this, we did this when we were jamming. That's the same boxes, but doing like a five note phrase just to give it a little bit of interesting to it. And this is without the flat five or the six that you throw into the blue scale to make it sound cooler. Right. This is just, and I did this just to show people that you, you're, if you're bored with the pentatonic, you're wrong. <laughs> The pentatonic is the uh, only scale any guitar player really needs. I mean, to get by, like, I mean, the, this is another thing that is interesting about your guitar playing is it is a lot of pentatonic, like you're, you're going over a lot of pentatonic stuff, but it seems like you also craft your own kind of scales based on those boxes. So like, it's, it's, it would be like, so there's yeah. one different note in there, yeah. but I think a lot of people you know, t going back to the rut busting, put a bow on that, you have all the tools you need in the pentatonic box, yeah. and if you alter one little piece, but still keep all of your all of your skills, you know, you don't have to jump up into skill set, it'll completely change the sound of your playing. Well, the thing is, too, is because people ask me what scales I use, and I'm just not pentatonic, but there's, <laughs> there's usually yeah. a chromatic element. Yes. And... But I'm not making it major or minor. I'm just adding cool, like semitones. Like you could go like a, like, and then in the same area, and then that's like that comes from like a, I'll do a lick. Like, so I'm doing like a string skipping thing, and then instead of going into the basic chromatic, I. Like that. 
And so right. there's so many ways that you can elaborate. Because if you get stuck in a zone, there's so many things that you just got to open your mind to. Um, ways of getting out. And that's why yeah. I feel like it's so important as a player. Like we were talking about licks. Yeah. And I spent years, and, and it, some of these years, like before I had kids. <laughs> Because now I just changed that first. I don't play guitar anymore. No. <laughs> so when, when I was like right in, I, I, I try to come up, I try to stump myself. Instead of getting into a rut, I go, okay, come up with something stupid and then conquer it. And I call it conquer the lick. Mm -hmm. And then before you know it, like if you're doing like... What happens if, if, you, change the, if you just change the order? And do like go ahead two notes and come back one. You got... It. That kind of thing. It's mm -hmm. so simple to just take it And you still else. arrive at the same, it's like a starting and ending is still at the same point. But, but the journey the, is different. Right. So, and we were talking about licks mm -hmm. and, uh, and my licks. And I was talking about the song I just recorded with my band called The Drills. And I wanted all the licks to be mine in the solo. But I wanted it to be kind of shreddy, kind of feely. So that it's, it opens up like that. It's kind of like... And then I, it goes to G, and I, I mean D, and then I go. Which is kind of stupid spidery shit, right? Yeah. But the note, the notes I picked was. Yeah. Those notes are not in that key. They they are though. Yes, exactly. That's what yeah. I'm saying. Is there is no right or wrong. It's just it's the starting and ending. But also, what what's very apparent with your guitar playing is the attitude and the confidence of yes, this is working. Yeah. And whoever's listening or watching is like, that's working. But if you put it in on like a score sheet or something, somebody looking at that music who reads music is like, what's happening here? Right. But that's not important. And, uh, well, and then and then it, and then it keeps going. You know, you add something that's really intricate like that, and then follow it by like a, a bluesier yeah. thing, which is in this case. It goes. If you listen closely, it's like a little, a little. It's an homage to, to Eddie, but it's like just changing it and picking it. And then, um, and then it keeps going. Like there's just licks of mine that I do in the situation, but which reminds me of something else. Like people yeah. think that, you know, you get to a certain level, like all your heroes, and they can play anything. And it's like most of the time, <laughs> mm -hmm. most of the mm -hmm. time. But I wanted, again, I was in a rut and I wanted to challenge myself, so I taught myself how to, how to play the tapping part of eruption, but picking every note. So. That kind of thing, right? So, but I couldn't do this. I could do. When I try to do this, my finger was like, screw you, dude. Yeah. So what you do. You just grab your guitar, you put a movie in, watch the movie, and just go for two hours. And then you got it. <laughs> <laughs> it's easy as that. <laughs> no problem. And you saw a movie. Sick. Hopefully right. it was a good one. Thanks for that uh, tidbit of wisdom. Can we talk about these instruments? Let's do it. Um, this is, now what, what is the official name? XG. Okay. Wanted to make sure that was correct. Yeah. Uh, this is the Framus XG, and as you can see, there's two models. These are the only two, correct? They're, well, um, no, because okay. they, they also come with two pickups. So this okay. has a humbucker, gotcha. this has one uh, PX90, and yes. then it comes with two PX90s and two humbuckers. Arcane? And Yes, this is an Ar Arcane PX90. That's a PX8, and that's an Alnico 8, uh, low resistance, like a run. Well, it's not that low. It's 9. Okay. Uh -huh. So... Um, what is your what is your thirty second synopsis of this guitar? So no, okay, well, 
the guitar of my dreams. <laughs> Number <Done>. 28 <laughs> seconds. Um, this switch, just so people ask about this switch, and this switch is a split parallel and series, and here it's just to kill the hole in this body. This was the first team built version, which is a lower price point, okay. and they put the hole there by mistake. So mm -hmm. we just put a kill switch in it. Um, nice. But basically, I asked for a 59 Les Paul burst neck, but a little wider at the nut. And without saying neck profile or uh, any of the, the numbers and the radius and yeah, stuff like that, they, they brought me a neck and it was perfect. Uh -huh. Like out of the gate in an hour. And then um, the body is originated as the, the Warwick Jack Bruce bass. Because, you know, they're all, hey, we want to build your famous guitar. And I was like, I have to be honest with you, because none of the, none of the guitars here can turn my crank. So, gotcha. But the Jack Bruce Warwick bass. <laughs> if that was a famous guitar, I would totally play that. And this was born. This is basically. so. This was the first iteration. Yeah, that was the first iteration. Gotcha. Yeah. Sometimes it comes with binding, sometimes not. Um, this is I used this last week in Sao Paulo in front of fifty thousand people with Bon Jovi. These are the same strengths. Wow. So um, this is the one I brought home. I got eight on the road, and uh, I have a couple of other famous models. I have two Idol Makers, and I have a Mayfield, and I have a uh, Panthera two. Um, XG Supreme. Because Links to all this uh, will be in the description, of course. Yeah. Now, uh, the interesting thing with my guitar playing, because this is the first time I've ever held this guitar, yeah. it is a wider neck than I'm used to, but it still plays pretty smoothly. Are, have you always been Thanks a left for Paul? that, man. Yeah, no Thank problem. Thank you. It's smooth. Um, <laughs> it's very smooth. It's one of those the things. Access where, also. I mean, yeah. I'm used to this being on a, like you know a larger body guitar without this cutaway. Yeah. So this is like a very interesting for from a guitar player's perspective. You should definitely try and play one of these. But uh, what is this? Was this? You said they just brought you neck and that was well, it. Well, they put. I mean, it was, I mean, we got really like I, there was by the end of the day there was a body on it, and the day after there was a pickup in hardware, and I was playing it, and it wasn't like you know obviously finished, and it was kind of jagged in places, and I was playing down here, and I go, hey, I'm keep hitting my knuckles on this, can we take some of that wood away? Mm -hmm. And in seven minutes that wood was away, and then yeah. it was perfect. So we really, I mean, to be in a situation, and I mean that's something for I think any guitar player to strive for to, because. We all compromise. Like people, okay, some people love the Les Paul, some people love the Strat, some people love the Tele. I always find something that's missing from every guitar I've ever played. Mm -hmm. I love the SG, but I feel, I'm a bigger guy, so it feels like a toy on me. It's like <laughs> yeah. thin. So this has some mass, you know? This is a thicker Yeah, this is a guitar. It's got some girth to it for sure. Um, and that was always my problem with SGs. Yes. Yeah. It felt like I was playing kind of a real. I don't know if it, great for Angus Young. Yeah, I'm, I'm not. I'm not <laughs> knocking an SG, but what I mean is, it just didn't necessarily feel com coming back to that yeah. comfort thing. Yeah. So, um, well, I'm glad that you've achieved intergalactic guitar oneness with, uh, <laughs> with your. Uh, signature. I like that term. Yeah. I'm stealing it. Take it for me. Um, maybe uh, we have a, maybe a couple more minutes here. Sure. I was hoping to. I recorded a video that features a lot of popular guitar techniques. Yeah. Uh, and after seeing you play on stage for a few nights, I've left a few techniques out, it would seem. So I'm hoping to make an addendum to that video. <laughs> and I'm hoping maybe you can show off some of the cool things that I've seen you do. Some of them include things like this. Uh, some of them include things like this. Oh, the phone. Some of them, some of, I don't know if you have your phone. I do. Ideas. I do have my phone. Um, I'll get that out. But maybe it's, some, it's maybe some things that the I guitar think... players may not consider. Because I love, I love whammy fun. bar tricks. Yeah. But I don't have a whammy bar. Okay. So everybody does that. I mean, it stems from Jimmy Page. But, but if you push it down first and plug, and then pluck it with the left hand, then it sounds like a whammy bar. Like push. Right? So okay. it sounds like a dive bar. Gotcha. So that's that trick. And then when I do this, I like it could be more melodic. But when you're then, then it's that's a rock the lick. That's the one. <laughs> right. yeah, yeah, that's what I was. That's what I was remembering. So yeah, there's stuff like that. Um, and then you know the the chromatic thing that we were talking about, which is like that's like a 
a weird thing, but I, I love that kind of thing. And it's when people come up and go, like even, it's like Steve Lukather came up to me after a club that he watched me play at with my band, The Drills, and he came up and he goes, hey man, you did this like where your hand goes this way, but it sounds like it's going that way. And yeah. all you want to say is like, you're Steve. Yeah, you're Steve. Luke there, dude. <laughs> <laughs> But um, no, it's kind of neat when you when when you do something that impresses somebody of that stature, right? Ah, uh, yes. Yeah, I can. It's awesome. I can imagine how that might feel. Yeah. So, obviously, so what what's the band you keep mentioning? The Drills. The Drills. That's it, my band. You you you're the front man. I, I am the front man. Um, uh, we have one record on iTunes called "Kick Your Ass in Seventeen Minutes." Okay. Because it's seventeen minutes of music, yeah. I like um, it. It's called "That's by the Drills. the Drills," and then for marketing purposes, everything after that is Phil X and the Drills. Gotcha. And there's a second record called um, "We Bring the Rock and Roll," and the third record is called "We Play Instruments and Shit." <laughs> These are amazing titles. Thanks, what was man. that song title you mentioned also um, earlier? Oh, the solo for that. <laughs> that solo is in a song called "I Wish My Beer Was As Cold As Your Heart." <sighs> And I, I'm pretty sure everybody can relate to that. <laughs> One point or another, we all can. That's right! <laughs> yes. So uh, we'll make sure to check out your music. We'll check out your guitars if we... Uh, I think I mentioned that you play guitar for Bon Jovi, I think. Maybe not on camera, but... Okay. Yeah, so that's, that's also a, another notch in your belt. That, uh, that's, uh, that's, that's a pretty good gig. It's a pretty, <laughs> you know, pretty good. Um, well, thanks a lot for hanging out. Hey, Phil. man. Thank you. Appreciate the, uh, the wisdom and education. Make sure you check out the description for all the stuff we talked about. And until next time, keep track. Tyler! <laughs> <laughs> that was the one, man. Sweet, dude. Thank you so much. Oh, no. We didn't do the phone, but next time. <laughs> oh, I'll, I'll, I have some footage of that from the club. I'll just... Okay. <laughs>